Welcome one and all to episode 6 of the How Good Is Your Overwatch League team series. This video will feature the LA Gladiators, who I'm very excited to talk about by the way. They had a relatively decent offseason, and in typical Gladiators fashion, they made a couple of big splashes to help grab your attention. We go through the same thing every single year with them. The Gladiators always have to be at the center of attention in some way, shape, or form, and for better or worse, they're never afraid to throw around money or make the big trade with which is something we can all respect. But the question is, are the moves they made enough to keep them afloat? We're going to talk about all of that and more, so don't go anywhere. And if you enjoyed today's conversation, consider giving this video a like and hitting the sub button down below as it helps out the channel a lot. Thank you, and now on to the usual programming, where we start off with a recap of the offseason to refresh our memories as to how we got to this point. When considering the departures list, the Gladiator said goodbye to some pretty amazing talent. The biggest loss was undoubtedly Bird Ring. The man played arguably the best Overwatch of his entire career on the Glads and was consistently a top-tier hitscan player throughout his entire career for the most part. From 2020 until the present, Bird Ring was arguably the biggest star on the team and he's not going to be someone that's easy to replace given all the clutch moments he's had throughout the years. He was always a safety net who made the big plays whenever they counted for this franchise. But the noteworthy losses don't end there. Muse moved on to the Toronto Defiant after just one season in LA, and it truly is a shame this had to happen. Muse has crazy upside as a player, and it really seemed like he was starting to hit a groove in the second half of 2021. He was also arguably the most reliable main tank player the team had since Fissure back in 2018. There was a good bit of promise for him to thrive and continue developing. That chapter has unfortunately closed though. No need to dwell on what could have been. All we can do now is simply move on. And on the topic of moving on, the Gladiators also parted ways with Moth. Given Moth's talents both as a player and leader, it's sad to see him go, but if we're being real with ourselves in this situation, it really doesn't affect the Gladiators much at all. The Gladiators played Moth progressively less as the season went on last year, and it kind of felt like he was no longer needed by the time we hit the Countdown Cup. Now, maybe it was just a meta thing. After all, Skewed was an amazing Brigitte player, and I think that Moth likely does play a lot more under different circumstances. But now we're just playing the what-if game, because Moth clearly wasn't what the team needed overall. He got talked about less and less as time went on, and now we're at the point where we don't even know if he'll continue playing professionally. So while sad, I think it could have been a lot worse. That final remark about Moth leaving is kind of how I feel about Mir's departure as well. His time in the spotlight was quite limited. He had his shining moments as like a Doomfist and general flex player, but his playtime was very selective. He failed to even eclipse 19 hours of total playtime and was generally seen as a specialist throughout his tenure. Of all the Gladiator's losses, this is probably the most painless one. What was maybe a bit less of an easy choice though was parting ways with Dipe and Tidola from the coaching staff. Those of you who have watched my channel for years now would know that I've never been the biggest fan of Dpay. There have been a lot of instances throughout the years where it felt like the Gladiators just couldn't adapt during key scenarios. However, the Glads finally fulfilled their potential last year by winning their first tournament in franchise history, and as much as I criticized the guy, he was never a terrible coach by any stretch of the imagination. The Gladiators made the playoffs in all four years under Dpay's leadership, oftentimes being one of the higher seeds in the league. So to see loyalty suddenly get burnt away like that was kind of strange, and some fans may not like the idea of moving on from him, and it raises some uncertainties for sure because this team has always been led by him throughout every single year of their existence. But at the same time, maybe this franchise could see improvement under new guidance, so definitely keep that in mind when considering whether this was a good move or not. Overall, the Gladiators parted ways with six people, which really isn't that bad. However, a good number of those figures were proven veterans and or had immense potential, so it's up to you to decide how bad this part of their offseason truly was. As the Glads said their goodbyes though, they opened up a whole new world of possibilities. On the player side of it, they added four talented individuals. At main support, they went with none other than Funny Astro. And Astro, in my opinion, was not as good for the Fusion last year as he was in 2020, but Philly were quite inconsistent. Not to mention that Astro himself was not with the team at the start of the year, and he missed a couple of months thanks to visa issues. So for that, I'm more than willing to give Funny Astro a pass, as I think he still definitely has a lot left to give. And talent-wise, he is very close to Moth. He provides the same leadership quality, 
qualities with a similar hero pool. The only real difference is that Astro kind of just has a different style of play. He's more aggressive than Moth, but he also plays the game incredibly smart, so he's kind of an analytic lover's dream, which is why I personally find him so amazing. Now, I think if it was up to the gladiators, they'd like to just run Shu and Skewed full time, but that may not always be an option depending on the meta, which is the exact reason why you should probably like this pickup if you support this team. It's better to be prepared after all. Flexibility could play a huge role in a new game like this, where things might be a bit more unpredictable. How I see it is, the Gladiators dumped a superstar level main support to basically just get another one. So in that regard, good on them. It doesn't feel like they got any worse at the support position. What's maybe a bit more up in the air though, is Ans coming in to fill the shoes of Bird Ring. It's not even like Ans is incapable or anything ridiculous like that. It's just that Bird Ring's consistency on this franchise was ridiculous. So understandably so, a lot of fans are questioning this move and see it as a potential downgrade. Ans wasn't quite the same player as last year, so I kind of get it. There's no way of telling if he's up to the task here. But I gotta say, if he does manage to get back on the right track, he could absolutely, positively be a fantastic replacement. From a skill standpoint, his mechanics are definitely on par with Bird Rings, and Ansa's has already shown us in previous years that he can be a superstar in this league. While it's reasonable to have concerns, you also have to understand that Ans has a crazy ceiling. He's high risk, but also high reward. It's not like he's a garbage can replacement. He might really be a good one on the surface of things, just from like a pure mechanical standpoint, and it would be silly in my eyes to give him no chance whatsoever. From here on out, it's up to Ans to decide what he can do. But wait, there's more with this damage dealing role. Let us not forget about Patty Pan. I know we've been talking about if Ans can live up to expectations and all, but this is the guy you honestly might want to be keeping your eye on even more. Patty is a DPS phenom out of Thailand who developed quite the reputation back in the day. He could typically be found at the center of attention thanks to all of his crazy, highlight-worthy moments. He was a fantastic flex who could effectively dominate on either role. The only problem was, he reached high relevance when he was still way too young to join the league. Despite Overwatch League being his main goal, he had no way of realistically attaining it, and due to contenders being in a poor state, he opted to retire towards the end of 2020 to pursue professional Valorant. But once he finally turned 18 years old, it immediately re-sparked his desire to play the game professionally, which led to him joining LA. On paper, this kind of acquisition has some promise to it. Patty Pan was a well-proven prospect back in the day. His pop-off potential is absolutely bonkers, and with him still being so young, there's a crazy amount of room for him to further refine his game. And since Kevster is already a great flex option, this move is not as risky as it may seem. If Patty Pan reawakens that ridiculous level from when he was a teenager, then great. If not, there's two other talented DPS players to plug into that lineup. Patty Pan feels like a more advanced version of what Mirror was. He seems like a rotational piece, but his hero pool and general potential are definitely bigger since he can do both hitscan and projectile. At the same time though, I really don't know what his expectations are going to be. He hasn't played professionally since 2020. He focused on a different game for a year and a half, and in a lot of instances, Ans and Kevster just might be the better combo to run. There's definitely a role to be had on this team for him, I just can't quite decipher what exactly it's going to be. Is Patty Pan an Overwatch League caliber player? I'm not entirely sure. At bare minimum though, we do know that he is gifted. He's not only proven in Overwatch, but also with FPS games in general. Now he kind of has to do what Ans did back when he was a rookie, or like Lip or Fit. Refine your mechanics and translate it into solid team-oriented play. This is one rookie that you want to watch extremely carefully, that is for sure. That does it for the DPS rebrand though, so now we have to talk about the tank changes, and the replacement for Muse is none other than former Redbird Esports and American Tornado main tank, Reiner. I for one like Reiner. He had the pleasure of dominating on numerous solid North American contenders teams throughout the years. He played every main tank hero you could possibly think of at a somewhat respectable level at the very least. This dude has no problem flexing, and I think that's super nice. 
Versatile tanks feel like an absolute must in this new era. They're going to be dependent on even more since there's only one of them in the game at a time. Maybe it's just me, but Reiner feels like one of those tank players who can be pretty decent on even the off-tank heroes as well that he doesn't necessarily specialize in. If the swapping game plays a big role in this new season, the Glad should be feeling pretty comfortable. While I personally do not think that Reiner's potential quite reaches the level of Muse, he's still a good player with an excellent track record, and that's what truly matters here. But who knows? Maybe at the least, he could be at the level of Muse in his rookie year. Muse only started to recognize his potential in the second half of the year in my opinion, and even then, not a lot of people were considering him to be a top-of-the-line main tank. Good, but not amazing. So from like a day one standpoint, Reiner might have what it takes for the Glads to see little to no drop off at tank. Regardless of where he falls comparison wise though, if the Glads want to show improvement, they're going to need an excellent rookie campaign out of this famous North American rookie. That sums up the player additions though, and I'd say that the Glads did a good job. Notable losses in all, they compensated at every place they could imagine with a combination of rookie and veteran talent. Now addressing the coaching situation, I feel like they did a pretty good job here too. While I wouldn't have minded if Depay was held on to, there's reason to look forward to what this team can accomplish by going in a different direction, and that's where Face comes in. After a few years of being the assistant coach, he got promoted to the head. He seems well respected on the surface, and he's had a few years to learn from the team's previous failures, not to mention that he had good experience working on talent esports back in the day. I think that a head coaching change could be the first step towards the Glads leveling up, but more than anything, the move that people are going to look back on even more are arguably, is the addition of Unter to their staff. To this day, I still can't believe that the Glads were lucky enough to grab him. Dude is coming fresh off of a grand finals appearance with the Atlanta Reign for crying out loud. Unter is arguably one of the best assistants in the Overwatch League. From British Hurricane in the LA Valiant to last year on the Reign, success follows this man wherever he goes. Please also bear in mind that Unter and Face are both Australian, and they've already linked up in the past before going to the LA Gladiators. They have early relationship, so their synergy and ability to game plan together is probably going to be really good. So it's an all-around great move that gets two thumbs up. What an outstanding pickup. Just to sweeten the deal though, they added even more new blood to the staff with Smash. But what's so special about this guy you may ask? Well, he only coached for a little team you may have heard of before. Does O2 Blast ring a bell to any of you? That's right, they added a coach from one of the best contenders teams on the planet to round out a fairly stacked looking coaching lineup. The Depay sacrifice genuinely may have been worth it when considering what they got in return. So again, I don't really mind the restructuring of their coaching staff. On paper, they could be one of the better trios in the league. From a strategic and developmental standpoint, I have high hopes for this group, just as I do with the rest of their players. I generally don't have a lot of complaints about the LA Gladiators. They have what it takes to be top level in the West yet again, and it kind of comes down to their new guys in terms of if they can maintain the same level of relevance. Like I said, Coaching is kind of one of those places where there's a lot of room for improvement. If they can maybe get a bit better with adapting and game planning and whatnot, then maybe this team ends up even scarier than they were before. Then at support, they're looking pretty good. Funny Astro, I mean, he's fantastic, and now you're pairing him up with Shu, who is coming off an MVP caliber season, and Skewed, who had a fantastic rookie campaign. That's a championship level backline right there. The three of them are all superstar level at their best, and they've got the entire support roster on lockdown until further notice. Much like last year, you should consider this to be the backbone of the roster. They have the star power needed to compete with any backline in the Overwatch League, and that's a fantastic thing. A position that maybe doesn't look as fantastic on paper, though, is Tank. Strictly talking from like a championship contender level, I believe that they fall a little short. Reiner and Space are fantastic players. They're not going to hold your team back from having a reasonably good season. Space has been a great player for years now, and I trust him to be clutch in a variety of metas. And as I said before with Reiner, the skill set that he showed off in contenders is what you want from a rookie. But when it comes down to being a genuine threat in those big tournaments, as well as the playoffs, I'm not entirely sure if they have what it takes to topple the big dog, so to speak. They they both fall short of being considered top tier as of right now in my honest opinion, and if they're pitted up against one of the league's super teams, they might end up getting outclassed. In most cases, they should be fine, which is why the Glads are still capable of being a top team, but in the critical moments, this could be the part of the roster that just can't hang in there enough. If these two manage to prove me wrong though, well, 
Maybe it's a different story then. The rest of the league should probably watch their backs. That's all I'm gonna say. Then we have DPS, which I consider to be more towards the middle ground. On one hand, we can have all the confidence in the world in Kevster. He's shown nothing but improvement since the day he joined the league, and now he's a superstar. It would not be surprising in the slightest if this is the year that he enters the MVP conversation. He can play Tracer, he can use Snipers, he can play Projectile, there's nothing that he cannot do, but he can only do so much by himself. With Bird Ring gone, it's up to the new guys to pick up the slack. Do they have what it takes, or are they going to crumble under the pressure? What version of Vance are we going to get? Is Paddy Pan still the same player he was after going to Valorant? So many unanswered questions with such little time, and that's a concern for sure, but maybe not as big as some people are making it out to be. Being what Bird Ring was is a big ask for sure, but in return for his retirement, you're getting two insanely talented damage dealers, one of which is already Overwatch League caliber and has proven he can be a superstar at this level, and the other is only 18 years old. This rotation arguably gives them even more options on what they can run, since Patty is more flexible than Mirror. So despite any worries, I think this DPS line is still quite attractive. It's more so just about trying to find their ceiling and reaching that potential. Much like Reiner in space, I trust these new DPS players to be good. It's just a matter of if they're championship level or not. That's the big question. But all I'm saying is, Ans and Kevster on paper, if they're both firing on all cylinders, sounds really scary. Bare minimum though, this damage rotation is still one of the better looking ones in the league regardless of if they're championship caliber or not, which means that you're in a relatively good place overall if you support the LA Gladiators. There's a whole lot to like and not a lot to dislike. LA is bound to output another respectable season, but I personally have doubts about them making that final push towards contender status. With that in mind, here are my season projections for the LA Gladiators. I'm going to say that they end up as high as 2nd in the overall standings if they play beyond their potential, and then as low as 7th place if everything just feels average or maybe slightly below average. 2nd feels unlikely since that's not a very gladiators thing to do, but taking performance into account, they could end up in contention for top team in the West. Even if things go for the worst though, they should still be expected to be in contention for a playoff spot. With all the talent they're working with, they should be capable of that much at the very least. Not considering their placement over over in the Western Conference, I believe they finish anywhere from 1st through 4th. The West could be a rough ride. It's filled with some scary looking rosters, and if the Glads end up outside the top 3, I'm not going to be surprised. However, it would definitely be a disappointment if they end up like top 5 or worse even, just because it feels like they're better than a majority of their competition. I like this team. They should be a threat to just about every team in their conference, as well as the league in general, maybe aside from a few teams. There's a few spots where they appear to be a little lackluster from a championship level standpoint, but all it really takes is for the tanks to exceed their expectations, and for the new DPS to play up to their potential, and that changes. This roster has quite the ceiling, and I'm looking forward to seeing how far they can push their limits. But until then, that's where we're going to be leaving things with the LA Gladiators. What are we thinking, ladies and gentlemen? Are the Glads legit? Or are they in for a down year? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And please do hit the like button and sub to the channel if you enjoyed today's content. And until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.